This is the Demystifying Mental Toughness Podcast, hosted by David Charlton, and you're listening to this podcast to help you build your own mental toughness, or so that you can support other people or your clients better. Either way, you will learn more about developing this plastic personality trait that all but guarantees that you will perform better and lead a more prosperous life. To make your way in life, to be the best person that you can be, to give yourself the best opportunity in your chosen field, being comfortable in your own skin, and finding and developing mental strength is so, so important, as I've emphasized in the other two parts of this short series. And today, in this episode, it's going to be a developmental one for you, where I'm going to go on and help you tap into some of your strengths and question your approach by going through a variety of scenarios and exercises. It's very easy to have lots of things going on in your head, lots of negative things, lots of must-dos, and you can go on to live life in a state of overwhelm. You can often feel that you're on the treadmill, that you're very reactive to things, where you get into doing mode and doing mode, yet you always feel like you haven't really achieved anything. And as a result, you can go on and miss things. For example, when you open your front door, your head can be so, so full. You miss the beauty, the blue sky, the view from the front door. You miss the little things. Maybe the fact that you can walk. The fact that you've got a car that you can go into and that you can drive to get to your destination. You miss the little things, the look, the brickwork, the stones the slate on people's roofs. By being aware of these little things, it can go on to strengthen your brain. I'm going to encourage you to be more aware of these sort of things. And I'm wondering, do you get caught up in self-sabotaging behaviours? For example, an elite triathlete that I'm currently supporting trains in excess of 15 hours per week, swimming, cycling and running, as well as strengthening their core and doing other activities in the gym. Yet she always feels that she should be doing more at the end of the week, that she tells herself this on a regular basis, a daily basis. This approach means that she's shooting herself in the foot, and in the long term it affects her confidence. Where do you sabotage yourself with some of your behaviours? Do you protect yourself by avoiding conflict out of interest? An example here is where a flatmate might be displaying annoying behaviour. They don't clean up after themselves. They leave a mess. They don't consider you when they go shopping. And these behaviours really frustrate and annoy you. So you have a conversation with them, but nothing changes. The next time you have a conversation, you become aggressive. But again, nothing changes. So then, further down the line, you choose to take the easy route and you give up. You resort to calling them names behind their back. Maybe if you go out and have a glass of wine, you resort to passive-aggressive behaviour, sly digs, sarcastic comments. All the while, you're getting more and more frustrated and annoyed. And when you think about this type of behaviour, are you actually protecting yourself? If it's making you frustrated and annoyed, what is it that you maybe need to do in that sort of situation? We'll look at another scenario now. Do you protect other people? Do you protect other people? Perhaps they're new to a job or a role and you're the boss. You would love to to delegate some tasks. Why? Because the tasks are overwhelming you. You're so, so busy. You'd love to take some time off. But you fear if you do hand over some of these tasks that people will judge you as not coping or weak. or You fear that jobs won't get done the way you'd like them to. So you hold on tight to these jobs. And are you actually protecting the other people? Because maybe you worry about overloading them. But all of these worries that remain inside your head. And you don't have these conversations, these important conversations with people. And you don't understand and take the time to really understand them and their motives. So as time goes by, you feel more and more overwhelmed and your mental strength ultimately 
is zapped as a result. Then we have another scenario. We'll talk about friendship now. Do you find that sometimes you're just too busy? Too busy doing things, too busy working, too busy using technology, social media, gaming, to have a simple conversation with a friend, to show them that you care. And again, you know, by doing this, this can have a positive effect on your mental strength. You can feel an awful lot better about you and be more comfortable in your own skin. So when we think about it, mental strength and the ability to see the simple little things, to avoid self-sabotaging behavior, to stretch yourself, to stretch others, to give your time and love to other people, it all takes strength, it takes determination, it takes commitment. So now let's think about mental strength and commitment. A number of my high profile guests who've competed at a high level in elite sport have told me about the sacrifices that they've made. They've missed weddings, birthdays, nights out with friends. They've gone through months where they haven't drank alcohol or they've made the choice not to drink at all in their lives. Now this takes endurance, it takes restraint, it takes a bigger picture mindset where you may lose out on some of the small things, but then you gain and you win with the bigger ones, the prizes, the results, the medals, the sense of accomplishment, the satisfaction. I'm wondering how easy do you find it to miss out on those little things? Or do you have FOMO, the fear of missing out? This commitment, this endurance, it can be built. It's like a muscle. It draws on, in my opinion, physical, physical health and fitness. If your diet is well balanced, if you take relevant vitamins and minerals, supplements, if you prioritize fitness, strength, flexibility, certainly depending on your, your chosen sport or field, if you prioritize sleep, making sure you get seven to nine hours sleep each night, and if you have some health problems, you seek to address them immediately and not ignore them, these are really going to help you. And these areas can massively help build your mental strength, your focus, and your commitment. Now let's think about your feelings. How often do you think about your feelings? Can you get drawn into self-criticism? Can you be very, very hard on yourself? I find a lot of my clients, in fact, the vast majority of my clients, they're highly motivated, they're driven, they want to do well. And this is a, a big challenge for them. And if you're one of them, what I'd like you to do is just to consider taking a little bit of time out, get a pencil or a pen and a bit of paper and simply make a list of all your strengths. In mental toughness terminology, some of your strengths may be that you can control your emotions well when you're on the pitch or the course, that you have a can-do attitude, that you love setting goals. And then if we think about your personality, it might be that you're kind, you're caring, certainly for others. You may well be intelligent too and honest and trustworthy. So go on, I encourage you, write down some of these strengths. You might want to, you might want to ask a friend too or a family member what they think. It's quite nice to, to get some positive feedback about what you're good at. It's not something that we, we choose to do very often. And then once you've done this, I'd like you to consider what it is that you actually use your strengths for. For example, the goal set on you, that might mean that you carefully plan your weeks ahead so that you achieve your best times in triathlon, if that's your sport, or if you're a football coach, so that your football team are well drilled and well prepared for matches coming up. And your can-do attitude may mean that when you're faced with a setback, with an obstacle, for argument's sake, a period of self-isolation due to COVID, you can quickly get into solution mode. You can quickly map out how you're going to spend your time more effectively. You're not going to dwell on the unfairness of the situation. And this exercise, it's all about self-appreciation, really. It's recognizing where your qualities lie and how they help you. Another thing that you can do is consider where your beliefs around your mental strength actually hold you back. 
Where is it? Where do others stop you from being mentally tough or mentally strong? Are there people around you that aren't supporting you in the right way? If you operate in a team environment, are you coming off the training pitch? Positive about the experience? Are you actively encouraging your teammates? Likewise, if you operate in the workplace, are you promoting a positive culture with the way that you communicate, with the way that you interact with people? Or are not? Is that the case? And last but not least, let's consider what mental strength is to you. I'd like you to sit back and consider, recall some times when you were strong, when you did handle adversity well. I'd like you to visualize yourself in these situations. And whilst you do so, you might want to consider some metaphors too. For example, the sight of a strong oak tree being battered by gale force winds, yet withstanding them with its long and resilient roots. For me, I think about the times that I went out running when I was in marathon training, those long runs up steep hills when I was suffering, the times that I went out in the snow in December, in January, and thought to myself I was absolutely crazy that not many people were doing this. And I can recall one particular run, which was for over three hours in freezing temperatures, where I couldn't feel my toes, and my running jacket was stuck to me, where it was mega painful. And when I returned back like a snowman, it certainly made me chuckle at the time. And it gave me such a, a massive sense of satisfaction and a feeling of strength, which was so energizing and uplifting. Yet it was really, really tough at the time to continue. So what about you? Can you recall some similar experiences when you were very strong, when you were resilient? And this takes me on to the body. How do you feel when you're energized? I've recently worked with a boxer who suffers from performance anxiety. And we discussed intimidating your opponent when you enter the ring. And for him, it was about feeling and seeing himself like he was seven foot tall, bouncing on his toes, shadow boxing with speed, moving quickly and aggressively, staring at his opponent with focus, with energy filling his head full of positive, energetic, aggressive thoughts. So for you, let's take it in. When you feel strong, notice what your body feels like. Feel the pleasure. Enjoy the waves of confidence, of belief, of resilience and resolve. Notice how you stand when you're feeling good, when you are feeling strong. How's your head positioned? What are your shoulders doing? How are your legs and your lower body positioned? Really appreciate that strength and the possibilities that these feelings can give you. It certainly beats having your head down and being overly concerned by the negative things. And I'm wondering how it can impact on your life in a positive manner, these feelings of strength. How good would that make your relationships with other people too? And let's be honest, when you feel good, when you feel comfortable in your own skin, you're more likely to interact with other people more positively. So yeah, this episode of Demystifying Mental Toughness has been a bit different. It's really, it's been set up in a way to make you question some of the things that you do, where you get in your own way. And I'm hoping it's been an uplifting one too for you so that you can feel that you can turn some of some negativity round into positive thoughts, that you can find your strengths, that you can really tap into them, that you can appreciate them, see them, feel them. It really can be a hugely inspiring process and very uplifting. And ultimately, by doing so, by just changing your approach ever so slightly, you really can help yourself feel more comfortable in your own skin. I'd be very, very grateful if you have enjoyed this episode, if you could leave a positive rating and review using Apple and iTunes for the podcast. It really helps me get a greater reach and impact more positively on more and more people's lives, which is what it's all about. Until next time, enjoy your week ahead. If you enjoyed this episode of the Demystifying Mental Toughness podcast with David Charlton, do check out my website, sport-excellence.co.uk and my online sports psychology resources.
The Sport-Excellence website has essential resources for anyone looking to build their own mental toughness or the mental toughness of their athletes or teams, or if you want to achieve peak performance more often or optimal functioning. The Sport Excellence website has everything you need to keep moving forward and thrive. So go on, head over to sport-excellence.co.uk to find out more.